Hello everyone. My name is Vinay Lal and I'm professor of history and Asian American studies at the University of California, Los Angeles, more popularly known as UCLA. World Book Day is nearly upon us. It's going to be on April 23rd this year. And I decided in connection with World Book Day that I would initiate a new series of very small, very brief lectures on books, on books that matter. Books that matter to me, books that perhaps matter to many others, books that have historically mattered to a great many people, whether in a country or among a certain group of people in a certain community, and sometimes all over the world. Their works such as the Bible, their works by Shakespeare, there's the Bhagavad Gita, there's the Quran. These need not be works that are necessarily religious. We certainly wouldn't put Shakespeare in that category, would we? But these are books that have mattered to many people. But the series that I want to initiate is a series that is not necessarily comprised simply of works that have mattered to everyone, but as I've suggested before, books that have touched me in many ways, books that I'd like to share with friends, with strangers, in the hope that strangers will become friends. It may well be the case that some of the books that I'm going to discuss very briefly in this series, which I'm going to initiate with a discussion, a very brief discussion of a book by Ashish Nandi called The Intimate Enemy, Loss and Recovery of Self Under Colonialism. It may be that some of the books that I picked and the manner in which I discuss them will perhaps lose me some friends. I don't think so, because all of these are books, the books that I propose to discuss. I'd like to do perhaps two a week, perhaps more. And I'd like to continue this series over the weeks and months and in the years ahead, if at all circumstances permitted. And it may be, as I've said, that perhaps my discussion of this may not be agreeable to everyone, but I'd like to share some of my thoughts about these books. So these will be short videos, roughly in the vicinity of five to 15 minutes, depending on the nature of the work. And some of the books that I expect to discuss in the weeks ahead and the months ahead include the Rose Walden, some of the essays by Ralph Waldo Emerson, some very scholarly works having to do with Europe, with colonization, with the nature of anthropology. So books such as Stephen Greenblatt's Marvelous Possessions, The Wonder of the New World, a book by Johann Fabian called Time and the Other. But I also expect to look at works of fiction, works of poetry, the collected poems of W.B. Yeats, which I turn to every now and then, something by T.S. Eliot, for example, something like The Four Quartets. And I also expect to discuss some works in Hindi, including the short stories of Premchand. I'd like to look at a work by an Indian historian by the name of Sundar Lal, I mean, he was a major figure in Indian nationalism in many ways, a largely for, forgotten figure who wrote a voluminous two volume history called Bharat Me Angrez Raj, which is really a study of India under colonial rule. Right? So works of that kind as well. And the list really is quite infinite. Right? I, I can think of thousands of books that uh, one might want to talk about, but I'm really gonna talk principally about books that have some meaning for me. Very recently, I have once again taught, I've been teaching some of the books that I'm going to mention and some that I have mentioned I've taught as well, but they are works that I've not taught at all, never taught T.S. Eliot. But if you look at Franz Fanon, uh, The Wretched of the Earth, uh, Black Skin, White Masks, or M.S. Césaire, uh, Discourse on Colonialism, these are books that I've taught recently. I've taught them previously as well. And these I expect will also be books that will be 
on offer over the course of the next several months. This will also be an occasion to really discuss the pleasures of reading. You know, there are many things that have been said about books that for those who read books, who love books, you can never be alone. And certainly I think one understands the meaning of solitude better when one understands books. And one also then begins to understand why solitude and loneliness are not the same. But there are also other very interesting questions that one can take up, uh, such as what happens when you revisit a book two years later, five years later, 15 years later. Right? It's, like, it's like revisiting films as well, that one sees a film, it leaves a great impression upon one. And then 10 years later, when one sees this film, it looks jaded. Right? It may be because one has matured, one's tastes have evolved, one's thinking has changed. When you go to a place 15 years later or 20 years later, the place looks different. One thinks to oneself, but perhaps it's also because one has changed. Maybe the city has changed much less than one thought, but one has changed oneself. Right? So how does one think about books? What is the future of the book? I also expect to discuss some works that really look at the future of the book. You know, there's some very interesting cartoons that I'm going to share. There may be a session or two where I'll share a number of cartoons about books. A cartoon that was sent to me very recently where a kid you know, uh, is given a real book and, and the kid says, what do I do with this? Uh, how do I turn it on? You know, uh, Because of course, if you have a Kindle and you read a Kindle, well, you turn the Kindle on. Um, and doesn't seem to understand that all you have to do is flip the pages, right? Well, of course it's a cartoon and you might think it's silly. Well, it isn't because strangely enough, the book has become a foreign object to so many people, right? Much as libraries are no longer visited sometimes by students. I'm always astonished by the fact that even at a major research university, such as the one where I am, UCLA, which has one of the largest library holdings in the world, in the world, not just in the United States, that there are students who have graduated from this university who have virtually never used the library at all. They are under the illusion that you can find every book that you're looking for on the internet. Right? So what is this world of books? And how do books become so dear to us? Of books, there is no end. So one can also take the view that one can get weary of books. Okay? And World Book Day, it seems to me, which is coming up on the 23rd, is not the only day that one should think of books and commemorate books. And this idea occurred to me of doing something because I was asked by one of my publishers to send a short brief video message of no more than 50 seconds. That's the age that we're living in, right? It's the Twitter age. So however many characters Twitter allows, I don't remember, I think it used to be 130. I think similarly, there's the expectation that, you know, well, when you have a book, well, if it's anything more than 50 pages, well, who's going to really read it? And now we know, of course, I mean, the publishers will tell you that uh, Barack Obama's Memoirs have sold millions of copies and I'm sure it's 500 pages or 600 pages and I'm told that there's a second volume uh, on the way. Well, I'm certainly not having to buy uh, the second volume. I haven't even purchased the first volume and I'm not certain at all that I would want to purchase uh, volume one. But the point here is not, of course, to uh, really offer a comment on Barack Obama, but rather to say that, well, the publishers will tell us that books really still are very much in demand. But as a university professor, I am really astonished by the fact that to so many students, the book is now something that is almost alien, right? They don't really read books anymore. Many students, it seems to me, uh, they read on the internet, uh, they read short articles, uh, they use Twitter, they use Instagram, and this is not to say that students don't appreciate books. But finally, I'd also like to say in this short introductory video, which will be followed soon thereafter by the first video, which as I've suggested is 
Don't be an Ashish Nandi is the intimate enemy, loss and recovery yourself under colonialism. Uh, I want to say that this series of book talks, if we may put it this way, they perhaps that's too lofty a term, book talk, uh, because some of my ruminations may be only five or 10 minutes long. Uh, but this series is intended not just for, for university students or professors, it's really intended for autodidacts. I think we should always respect people who have learned of their own volition. That's what the word autodidact really means, right? Self-taught, people who are self-taught. There is a great tradition all over the world of people who have been self-taught. You didn't have to go to universities to acquire an education. And I think that autodidacts perhaps different, have different ways of reading books as well, right? What their relationship is to books is something that I think is itself the subject for a certain kind of set of reflections and inquiry. So with this, I would like to uh, wish all my viewers uh, in anticipation of what's going to come up, a happy World Book Day. And I hope that I can deliver, as I said, at least a couple of brief talks, which will be posted on this site uh, every week. Uh, and for weeks ahead and going into months and years. Uh, some of you may also be aware of the fact that I do maintain a blog. Uh, this is a blog which has serious essays. There are about 300 essays, roughly between 1,200 and 2,500 um, words each. Uh, Vinaylal.wordpress.com. And I also encourage you to go and visit that site. And you can do some serious reading over there. Uh, you will also find recommendations in many of the blogs uh, to other kinds of books as well. Thank you and bye-bye.